Hello everyone and welcome back to T-Sets Transport. In this video today, we'll be taking a look at the new Deniston station upgrade featuring Red Rattler shuttles between Strathfield and Epin via Deniston. This is quite a special video as um, it will be probably my longest video yet. Um, so uh, yeah, just sit back, relax and enjoy the video. We're first going to start off with the Red Rattler pulling in from Strathfield with only special press and media on it to get to Deniston and then they'll be doing special speeches. So here is Red Set F1 arriving at Deniston now. Alrighty, so Red Set F1 is now arriving at Denison, as you can see here. Um, Joe Halen, Matthew Longland, and a couple other big executive people from City Trains and Transport for New South Wales and everything will be um, disembarking from the train. Um, so, uh, yeah, during that time of them taking forever to get out and everyone crowding around the Red Rattler and trying to figure out what the heck was going on, here's just a few clips of the trains while I also explain... Um, just the general day what's going to go what's happening so um in a, about a minute or two in the video you'll see uh the speeches begin with uh joe halen uh, another lady who i don't know who, who they were um and then an acknowledgement to country um and stuff like that so yeah after that we'll be then going on the red rattler um to epping and back to deniston i got off at deniston as i was going to go out to some other stations and film Red Set F1 at stations such as West Ride and Deniston. Um, those videos will be available on my train spotting channel, City Transport Vlogs. And actually, by the time this video is out, it should be there should be a um, train spotting at West Ride featuring the Red Set F1 on my train spotting channel. So uh, yes, uh, make sure you go check that out after this video. I, if I remember, I'll put it on a little info card on the top right of the screen. Um, so yeah, after those, um, I'll then jump back on Red Set F1 from Deniston and head down to uh, Strathfield. That will be its last shuttle run down to Strathfield where it will then terminate and head back to Flemington. Although I did jump on a train earlier before that and then went back. So um, yeah, so this is now starting the speeches. I will shut myself up. Um, I might cut through a bit of it as it did take about 20 minutes or so the speeches and if you get bored of it it will have there will be chapters on the bottom of the screen on the little red red and gray bar so just skip through those and you can go to the next chapter after these speeches so uh, yes yeah, sit back relax and enjoy these speeches and since then it has witnessed countless journeys today we're celebrating a new chapter the completion of the Denison station accessibility upgrades and ensuring safety and accessibility for all. Thank you for your patience. We've got many residents and locals here today. So thank you for your patience during the construction. Your support and understanding has been truly appreciated. And let's not forget your input on preserving our heritage. Residents like Mr. John Woodland have had a real impact on how this project is shaping up, has shaped up. I also want to extend my gratitude to Sydney Trains, our delivery partner, Haslan Constructions, and the dedicated transport team. The new lifts, refreshed platforms are the result of this collaboration. With the improved accessibility and safety, Deniston Station is now better for all passengers. Today, we are honored to have Uncle Brendan and Uncle Les and he will lead us through smoking ceremonies, so we'll get two. And, and this is a way that we can show our respect to the traditional custodians and mark this new phase. Now, if I can, let's turn it over to Uncle Brendan. That's nice and Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brendan. I'm the cultural representative and cultural educator from Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council. And our land council under the Land Rights Act, we are the cultural authority and the guardians and custodians of land within our boundaries. 
We are the guardians and custodians because there are no traditional owners left within the Sydney area. Um, and, I, and I'd just like to say, we, we're we on the lands of the Wallamatty group that are part of the Eora Nation. Eora, not Dara, Eora Nation. And the Wallamatty are one of 29 tribes that make up what we call the Eora Nation. The boundaries for the Eora Nation start from the ocean and they're surrounded by three of Australia's most beautiful rivers. We've got the Hawkesbury, the Nepean, and the Georges River of the tribe you gathered on here this morning, the Wallamatical. So on behalf of those Wallamatical ancestors, because we believe their spirit is still in the lands and the waters, on behalf of Metropolitan Aboriginal Land Council as the cultural authority on these lands, gives me great honour to welcome you here this morning. Welcome to Wallamatical country. <coughs> Welcome to Country is not a ceremony that we've just come up with to cater for white people. And a Welcome to Country ceremony is not a welcome to Australia. Within Australia, we have many Aboriginal nations and many Aboriginal countries. And a Welcome to Country ceremony we've been doing since before the beginning of time, because that's how long we've been here for. Since the beginning of time. When we're welcomed on Country, and to this day, many of us don't walk on each other's country unless we're welcomed on country. It's a sign of respect. And it's just the same as when you welcome someone to your house. When we're welcomed to country, we need to know where the toilets are. We need to know where the sacred sites are that we can and cannot visit. And we need to know where the water holes are that we can drink from and can't drink from. And this is our welcome to country. So it's always an honor to perform this ceremony off the tree and burning it. It's a ceremony that we've been doing since the beginning of life, right through to the end of life. As soon as our babies are born, the women do a smoking ceremony. So they put, bless the baby, and baby gets a smell of country on their body, and every living thing on country knows those babies are connected to country. We do the smoking ceremony during life. Different plants we burn have different healing properties. And we do our smoking ceremony at the end of life, our sorry business. Before I pick the leaf from a certain tree, there's a song I sing to the tree in my language. And that song, that prayer and that magic goes into the tree, into the leaves. Only then do I pick the leaves. When I burn the leaves, that releases that song, that prayer and that magic. And this is what our smoking ceremony is. It's always a cleansing and a healing ceremony. It gets rid of all the bad energy gives you the smell of country on your body as well. You have that connection to country and safe travel whilst on country. You can never ask me what leaves I'm burning either. We need to keep something sacred and secret. We've already let the cat out of the bag about how good kangaroo, emu and lemon myrtle tastes and look how expensive that is to buy in the shops now. If you do forget and ask me, I'm going to tell you it's called nanya and Scott. It's none of your business, and it's got nothing to do with you. <laughs> I always traditionally light my fires with a big lighter. And thanks to work, health and safety, I have my sacred Bunnings tin as well. Don't come up one at a time, because if you come up one at a time, we'll be here all day. Come up to the smoke and wash the smoke over your body, like water. Wash it over your body. So it, that was just a really um, important reminder that 
we do need to learn more um, and there is still so much more to learn about um, Aboriginal and Indigenous culture. So thank you so much, I'm really moving. Um, so thank you, Uncle Brendan, for guiding us in this moment. Now, I tell my kids that I uh, get to build train stations for a living and uh, play with trains, and they don't care. But this morning I said that I will be introducing our Minister, Transport Minister Joe Halen, Halen to this event, and they care. So I think I've made it now. Yeah? Uh, I'm finally impressive to my children. So with, in saying that, I'm thrilled to introduce our Transport Minister, Joe Halen. Thank you so much. I want to thank Uncle Brendan for that very generous welcome to country uh, and smoking ceremony. And I too want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're on this morning. Pay hey, my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And remind us all that our country is on a journey to reconciliation with the oldest living culture in the world. And a critical step in that journey is the 14th of October. I will be voting yes, and I'm very proud that the government that I'm a part of supports a vote for yes too. I want to acknowledge some important people that are here with us this morning. My very good friend Jerome Laxal, your federal, federal member, is here. Give him a round of applause. And councillors that are here with us as well. Councillors Penny Pennington, Trent Brent, uh, Brown, Sophie Lara Watson and Bernard Purcell. Welcome to everyone here. Really likes trains. There are some people that really, really like trains. In fact, I've met some uh, enthusiasts, I'm going to call them, who often uh, turn up when we get the old ones out. And it's lovely to see them here. Now, the people that are in charge of these things are uh, present with us today because they're also responsible for uh, making sure our services are reliable for you, but also improving those services. And today, um, we are taking a really important step in that to make sure that your station a small little station in this beautiful quiet part of Sydney, but every station needs to be accessible to everybody. So I want to uh, thank and call out in particular, um, I want to thank the Secretary of Transport, Josh Murray, is here. I want to thank uh, the CEO of Sydney Trains, Matt Longman, is here, uh, and Camilla Drover is here. And I want to thank every single person across Sydney Trains that has worked with us to realise this upgrade. Let's give them all a big round of applause. These are hard-working public servants delivering essential services to you, to your community and the people across our state. And I am incredibly grateful uh, to them uh, for their work, but also very proud to be a part of a government that is putting those people first because we can't do uh, what you need us to do without them. This beautiful station has served your community for 85 years but this is the first time that it is fully accessible to everybody. People with disability, our elderly, mums, dads, grandparents, carers with prams. I've got three little ones, and the two smallest ones came out at the same time. And struggling with a double pram uh, to get on a train, it's a tricky business. But I am so proud that across our transport network, we are delivering more lifts to make it possible for everybody. Because then people can make the choice to use public transport. And that's cheaper for them, it's better for our environment, it's more efficient. And also, our city is a better place uh, because our roads aren't as clogged and people can travel uh, safely. You can be on your phone, you can talk to your friends. I think public transport travel is just great. And we're gonna try and make it easier and better for everybody. This upgrade includes two new lifts connecting the station entry to the platforms, while the accessible paths to the new lifts to the boarding assistance zones have also been upgraded. Two new station canopies and accessible seating have been installed at the platform, and we've also made sure we've adjusted the handrails to meet current standards. The commuter drop-off space has been established on board and present, along with new accessible parking spaces. Our footpaths to the station have also been regraded, so it's accessible and meets our international standards. Two new accessible bathrooms are now operational within the existing station building, along with upgraded CCTV, lighting and wayfinding. 
We also responded to requests from the Deniston Historical Society, Society to see the station's interwar style with Art Deco influences retained. And I want to particularly thank the community uh, in many ways for engaging uh, in this upgrade, but also to make sure it's, it's sensitive to our history and also to the local community. We reinstated the heritage awning at the entrance and windows to the platform waiting room. Now this is a great example of how transformative upgrades of our local stations can be. Uh, the New South Wales Government in our budget just this week added an additional $300 million to the train station upgrade programs uh, so that we can see more stations like this become accessible to everybody. We want to make sure that they're in areas where they are most needed and we want to get them done as quickly as possible. Today is a great day for this local community uh, and I'm really proud that everybody here will now be able to access trains, the old one here today, but also the new ones that arrive each and every day. Thank you so much. Red Set F1 operation today happened. Uh, the Sydney, I'd like to acknowledge them, the Sydney Trains Crew and Maintenance Team led by John Snyder. He's, oh, he's over there, he's behind the scenes, but he certainly um, helped make this happen. Uh, taking care of the timetable adjustments and the volunteers from the historic electric traction who served as the door monitors. Your contributions are greatly done. And now while you're here, we got a complimentary barbecue lunch, which we all know it's never going to be a sausage sizzle. Check out the historic station images and join our First Nations run running workshops. We have the Nemto Fold of Trains to add that fun for the week, so um, that would be great fun for the kids here today. So once again, a huge thank you for all your contributions. Let's make the most of the day and enjoy the wonderful activities we have in school. Please join us at the station where Uncle Les will be the smoking ceremony for the station. So thank you so much. Alrighty, so let the Red Set F1, Red Rattler, whatever you want to call it, ride begin. So um, I will now be getting on the Red Rattler to then head up to Epping and then back to Deniston where I'll be getting off and begin train spotting. So um, here's the journey from Deniston to Epping.
This probably just reminds me now, um, so I'd just like to give a little bit of a acknowledgement to the people who I met today at the um, special event. Um, I met a head, Matthew from Ahead Matthew Awesome, we had a good chat, we actually had, we spoke a lot. Um, Paul from Paul's Train Vlogs and Sharon from Building Beautifully. Now, um, I said this in a... Uh, community post to my members only so if any members are watching they've probably seen this post by now but I mentioned in it that if this event was to happen just one year ago so um this was on the 24th of October 2023 so if this, if this was to happen on the 24th of October 2022 it's probably a good chance that none of those three who I met would have knew who I was like it's just mental to think that like big youtubers now know who I am but um yeah, let's see what's to come in the future. Who knows, like, um, I don't know, Jeff Marshall or Mr. Beast. You never know, might know me, but um, I'm getting my hopes up. Oh, well, um, back to the journey.
told us don't train nobody.
Alrighty, so I'll now be getting on this Waratah set A22, one stop down to West Ride to then begin my train spotting. Um, now, like I mentioned in, earlier in the video, um, the full video of the train spotting at West Ride will be available on Sydney Transport Vlogs probably by the time this video is now out. Um, if it is, and hopefully I'll remember to, and if I have time to, um, I will link on the top right of the screen a little info card that should hopefully be about around now a um, little pop-up showing the West Ride video. But if there's not, you can just head over to my Sydney Transport Vlogs channel, and it should be one of the latest videos on there if you're watching this video around the time it comes out. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go to West Ride, and I'll show you. Um, I'll have the clip of F1 going past and then heading back up to Deniston to ride it back down to Strathfield and then we'll begin to slowly wrap up the video. Train to arrive on platform one goes to Gordon via Central. First stop Meadowbank, then Rose. Alrighty, so here comes Red Set F1 passing by West Ride. I will have it at two angles. This is the first angle now, and then a second angle after this. Alrighty, so I did make my way back to Deniston. I thought I'd, on the way up over to the other platform to wait for Red Set F1, I'd show you a bit of the um, station upgrade. So it includes a new mesh kind of art wall and um, new lifts, as you can see just here. Um, and then obviously some new stairs and um, uh, new railings. To, uh, I think they were saying one of the speeches. It might have been in the video. I'm not too sure. And they said something to do with it according to the new standards and everything like that. So, um, yeah, I'll just head, uh, head down to the new platforms here at resurface platforms, I should say, um, at Deniston and um, film Red Set F1 arriving into the platform. Central. First stop, West Ride. 
Drive, then all stations to Strathfield, then Burwood, Redburn, Central, Town Hall, Wynyard, Milsons Point, North Sydney, then all stations to All right, we are now on board Red Set F1. Um, now, I won't show the entire journey um, of the trip down to Strathfield. That will be available uh, once again on Sydney Transport Vlogs and potentially on my T Set Stuff channel. Not too sure about that though yet. Um, I will show a bit of the journey though, it departing and going through its first few stations, and then at the um, and we'll get to Strathfield and then. Uh, train or two at Strathfield and then um it will start to wrap up the video um and then probably since I did get a couple little bloopers whatever you want to call them um which I will add at the um end of the video so uh yeah stay tuned for that so here is the ride on Red Set F1 from Deniston to Strathfield showing little parts of the journey which will be fully available on my other channels now See you, Matthew.
Alrighty, so we are now slowly pulling into Strathfield Station on platform number one. Um, oh, everyone will have to get off the train here as this, is, this was its final run and it will be heading back to Flemington Maintenance Centre. Um, so yeah, here's the rest of the clips just here of it pulling in and then some V sets at Strathfield while I waited for my train back to Central Terminal with um, a couple other enthusiasts. So yeah, I'm just going to call them enthusiasts. Um, they can say who they are in the comments if they know who they are. Um, but yeah, here is us arriving at Strathfield now. Alright, so after trying to get a shot of um, the VZ, I was catching back to Central. Um, luckily, I was recording, but some guy came literally out of nowhere and stuck up the bird or root finger, whatever you want to call it, at me. So I just moved it out of the way. I didn't want to. I didn't want him to get angry at me, or whatever. So yeah. Oh well, that's some people for some reason. But um, yeah. Anyway, so that's it for the journey now. Um, I'll finish off with the last clip before heading to the bloopers of um some v-sets coupling at central so this was actually when it was a 12 carriage v-set you can see that on my t-set stuff channel um which you can head over to my homepage and it should just have t-set stuff on there there'll be a video about the 12 carriage v-set so here's the coupling now Alrighty, so that's all for the recordings of the event. Um, I did have a lot of fun and um, I was able to meet a couple um, f subscribers and other YouTubers, which was exciting and everything like that. And I'm sure I'll meet some more people next weekend at the Transport Heritage Expo as um, I will be out for all three days. So um, if you do see me, don't hesitate to come up and say a quick hello. I'd love to have a little chat. Um, but uh, yeah, so... That is it for all the video recordings of this video. I thought um, while I'm talking just here, I'll have um, a little slideshow presentation of um, a lot of the probably my best photos of the day. That might be a new thing that I might start doing for special events where I have a little slideshow at the end of the video with um, the best photos of the day. Let me know if you do like that idea and I'll um, consider putting that into all of my videos. So um, yeah, that's it for this, um, all the videos as I mentioned and um, yeah, so I might also quickly add for next weekend, or this weekend now, um, is the Transport Heritage Expo for 2023. Um, ignore the background noise, by the way. There's some garden work going on at a different house, so please ignore that um, if you do hear it. So, um, yeah, I'll be attending on day one. I'll be doing all train events. Um, day two, I'll be focusing more on steam train events. And day three, I'll be focusing more on electric train events, such as chasing the um, S-Set and Red Rattler. Um now, for my own privacy, um, I will not be sharing what stations and at what times and where I will be at um, during the weekend. If you're lucky enough to see me, you see me. But um, anyways, uh, I will now head on to the bloopers for this video and then it will we will wrap up the video. Um, and uh, for those who don't know, this is actually now my longest um, video 
I've ever, ever uploaded onto this channel, excluding live streams. My longest live stream or longest ever video thingy, whatever you can watch on this channel ever is about four hours long. And that was the uh, state election live stream. Um, and actually probably would have seen, um, if you've watched the entire video, which good on you if you did watch it, um, thank you for watching it. I did put a lot of hard work into this as I've been editing this for about four hours now. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, Joe Halen did mention, um, the 14th of October about how, um, she'll be voting yes to the voice referendum, referendum and stuff. But, um, on the 14th of October, I will actually be doing a big live stream as well. Um, it will be hopefully me counting down to 4,000 subscribers on this channel, which um, is only about six, five, six months after I um, uh, did the 3,000 live stream. So, God, I'm growing fast. Um, but yeah, that will also feature um, coverage of the uh, referendum results that will go on for a few hours. So do make sure you check that out. It um, You probably have noticed it, it has been displayed on the main homepage at the top of um, my channel. For the past like two to two weeks or so, um, that will stay the same way. So um, yeah, it'll be up there for everyone to have the notif notifications turned on for it, and um, yeah, save it. So um, yeah, make sure you um, tune into that stream. I'm sure everyone will love it and stuff like that. But um, enough of me talking. I will now head on to the bloopers for this video, and it's not that long, but still a couple of bloopers and stuff like that, and then. Um, We'll wrap up the video. So, uh, yeah, here are the bloopers now. Sydney Transport Vlogs. Just currently here at Denniston to do some train spotting at Denniston. Featuring Red Set F1. There's a special event going on. That's Paul from Paul's Train Vlogs. Um, there is a special event currently going on at the moment at Denniston, so I'm just going to film some trains here for you guys. Featuring Red Set F1. Alrighty, everyone, that is it for this video. Thank you all for watching this awfully long video. Please consider subscribing and becoming a member of the channel. Um, and stay tuned for the, my hope, I'm hopefully going to try and do a long weekend daily upload kind of little series thingy. So I'll upload daily this weekend, one video on Saturday, one video on Sunday, one video on Monday. If not, then at least two videos this weekend. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys all soon. Goodbye for now.